Hi everyone, welcome back to Rich Reviews. I've cracked it. I've solved one of the key 458 riddles. Keep watching and all will be divulged. So what riddle has been solved? The air conditioning. Now I've detailed the problems with the 458 air conditioning previously in our top 10 quirks and features of the 458. So I'll put a link in the description below to that video. Notwithstanding, this is the only section in the interior of the car that you cannot spec to be in carbon fiber. So it has to be in this plain old plastic. So obviously that's a bit, bit um, inferior and not so great. But the main problem is the air conditioning system and the, cli the climate control system has a mind of its own. It's got these auto and manual buttons on there, but you just cannot seem to, it doesn't seem to function logically. And I've worked it out. I've actually worked it out what it all relates to. And pretty much it was just by pure chance by just faffing around and playing with it and thinking unlogically how it might work. The air conditioning system isn't documented in the 458 manual. Bizarre, I know, but hey, it's Italian. You know, that seems to be an excuse for everything. It seems to be a big joke that the Italians have on the on the 458 owners or on the 458, the 488 and the F8 owners, etc., and all the other downstream or upstream cars that had this sort of configuration. So how do you actually work the air conditioning then? How does the air conditioning system work? So first of all, I'm gonna give you a brief overview of what each of the controls does for the climate control in the 458. And you can pretty much um, assume that this is the same for the 488 and for the FA as well. So just looking at these controls, these are duplicated on the, for the passenger side and for the driver's side. And in effect, they control the temperature so these is, is purely just the temperature that you want to be for the particular region or location. So this is for the driver side location and this is for the passenger side location. These buttons, as I'll explain later, sort of control auto mode, but as you can see, they sort of don't as well. <laughs> these provide heating to the front screen and the center section or rear screen because obviously this is this is a spider so it has a folding roof so you've got a center rear screen which actually has a heated element in it as well so this is a front screen this is a rear screen to heat up the screens to demiss them in effect this is a centralized fan control so this controls the speed of the fan as you can hear there this button controls the passenger side manual mode more on that later and this side switches on the actual air conditioning or, or toggles the air conditioning on and off. So these buttons are duplicated on either side for each location for the passenger and driver side. And they define the distribution of air for the floor, center and screen. So if you switch them to the different locations, it controls specifically where the air is distributed. Okay, so looking at the controls of the system, as I've detailed earlier, this is plastic, so you can't spec it in carbon fiber. So that's a bit of a letdown. And one of the only letdowns really of the interior of the 458, because you can spec everything else in carbon fiber, or you can have it in classic specification if you want, whereby you don't have this carbon fiber, you have it in, in um, the standard um, aluminium style. So you have to think as an Italian, you have to pretty much remove all logic when you think about how the air conditioning system actually works. So moving down to the controls. First of all, we start from the auto position. Now, what does the auto position actually mean? Yeah, you think automatic. So it's in automatic mode. So when in auto mode, the climate control system automatically configures the direction that the air comes from. So whether it comes from the front facing vents or whether it comes from the screen fence vents or whether it comes from the floor vents. It automatically decides where that's going to come from. And I believe it does that by actually pushing some of the, some of the um, air conditioned air to the feet, some to the, to the face, to these vents, to these central vents, and some to the actual screen. So it separates them equally in thirds between the three. That's what the auto mode does. So it doesn't separate it out. So if you've changed in the configuration settings, which we'll get to in a minute, the auto mode automatically takes over and it distributes the air equally between the floor, the central section of the vents and the screen. Also, the auto mode automatically controls the fan, so the speed of the fan, so the, so the, so the, so the amount of volume of air that's pushed out into the cabin of the car. Now that all is configured 
in with one central control. What is that central control? The temperature. If you notice, it remains in auto mode when you change the temperature. So if you say, for example, the actual cabin is, is 20 degrees. If you move it up to 22 or above or above 20 degrees in effect, it will sense that the temperature needs to be increased, that the, that the actual heat needs to be increased and therefore it will increase the fan speed and it will then push more volume of air out towards the floor, the center vents and the screen. That's in auto mode. Now, the problem has always been, how the hell do you switch it out of auto mode into manual mode? Well, you press the auto mode and you think that would switch it out into manual mode. No, it doesn't. Okay, so what the hell is going on there? And if you press the manual mode, then it switches out the passenger side climate control system into manual mode, but not the driver side. So why the hell does it do that? And you switch the manual mode off and it switches the passenger side back into auto mode. No logic at all. So first of all, this side, these controls are all relating to the passenger side controls, including the manual option. So when you use the manual option that only controls the passenger side interface, that's very important to understand. Now, overall, within auto mode, how do you switch it out of auto mode? What you do is you change any setting for the distribution of the air or the speed of the fan. You change any of those two settings and it automatically switches into manual mode for that location. So if I change those settings for the driver mode, it switches it out of auto mode. So if you look, I change the fan distribution from the bottom configuration and mix between the bottom and the center. If I change that at all to center delivery, it's now switched out of auto mode. So if you change any of those configuration, whether it be the actual location of the delivery of the air or whether you change the fan speed, it'll automatically switch out of auto mode into manual mode for that location. Just so either for the driver side or for the passenger side. Obviously here, I'm just changing the, changing the controls on the driver side. Now, if I put it back into auto mode, what that does then, irrespective of where I've set that to deliver the, the, the volume of air, it automatically sets it into distribution, distribution of lower, middle, and screen. So it, se so it separates out a third between each of those. It, it ignores, in effect, how you've got those controls set. And to switch it back into manual mode, you'd have to then if I wanted to switch it back into just central only, I'd have to then switch it to another setting and to switch it into manual mode and then switch it back again into that option. So just to summarize that bit again, because this is the key ingredient to getting your air conditioning, your climate control to work as you'd expect, is any of these controls, any of these two controls, the fan speed or the, or the distribution of the air, the heated air or, or, or air conditioned air, changing any of these two settings from auto mode. So if I switch it back into auto mode, changing any of those. So if I change the fan speed, then you can hear the fan speed increase. So that's now in manual mode. And I've told it that I want a higher volume of air to be, to be distributed which is between whichever is configured here. So that's in full manual mode. But if I now switch the auto mode on, fan speed drops down and it then goes back to distributing the volume of air between the floor, the center section and the screen. How bizarre. Who would ever think that? So irrespective of what fan speed you've got, it'll automatically, um, when you switch it into auto mode, it automatically takes over and it does everything in relation to the temperature that you've set it to. So auto mode is just in relation to the temperature. One control, the temperature, that controls the distribution of the volume of air and the fan speed. Now you'd expect it to control the fan speed because obviously it's gonna push more either climate controlled, air conditioned air or heated air to be able to get the car to the particular temperature that you've set, but you wouldn't expect it necessarily to change the actual distribution of that air. And it definitely does. It definitely changes from the allocated setting or whether it be central, lower or screen, it definitely changes it to an auto mode of where it perceives it needs to deliver it to provide that temperature that you've configured the system to when in auto mode. I know I keep saying this about auto mode, but this is such a, a bizarre approach to this functioning. It's really crazy. And just to show you again, but on the passenger side now, passenger side is in auto mode. If we now change the, the configuration of the fan, it's switched out of auto mode and you can hear the fan speed increase because I've set it to the highest speed for the fan. If I now switch it back into auto mode, there, comes off. 
when I switch the fan configuration to, to a different mode, it automatically switches. Because there's only one fan control, there's not a separate fan control for the passenger and the driver's side, just switch that down a bit. It switches both sections, both the passenger and the driver's side out of auto mode because there's only one fan speed. And then you notice there that when I switch that back on auto mode, it automatically put that back into auto mode as well. So it automatically put the passenger side back into auto mode because of where it recognized that, that situation was in effect where the status was or the state was before. Bizarre, eh? And again, if I change the location of the, where I want the air to be distributed in the cabin for the passenger side, it again switches it out of auto mode. And I can change it there to be just the floor or just the screen. And now switching it back in auto mode, it then does its own thing. It then decides where it's going to distribute the volume of air in relation to the temperature that's configured on this side, on the passenger side. And of course, this is whether or not you want the air conditioning set up or not. If you switch that off, then also it switches both systems off the auto mode as well. But if you switch it back on, it leaves it off in manual. You then got to decide whether or not you want it switched on to auto and the driver's side will take over the, the passenger side. It's still pretty much semi-illogical, or it's very illogical in how it does things, but there is some sort of standardization in how it works now. To summarize, you can control the climate control by knowing that when it's in auto mode, it takes over everything purely in relation to the temperature that you've set the location too. So whether that be the driver side location or the passenger side location, it will function, it will distribute the volume of air and it will set the fan speed in relation to the temperature that you have configured the system for. Now, as soon as you change any of the, lo the direction locations for the air or the fan speed, then it will change and switch out auto mode for that particular location unless you're operating or changing the fan speed and then it switches auto mode off on both locations, both the drivers and the passenger side. Where's the logic in any of that, guys? <laughs> it's no wonder they redesigned it for later models. Uh, just friggin' nightmare, absolute nightmare. But once I know that, it's simplified. But once you know, you know. If you don't know, you don't know. Now I hear you ask, or do I hear you ask? Maybe not, but I'm going to tell you anyway. How the hell do you switch the system totally off? Because there is no off button on the climate control. The only way I've sussed how to switch the system totally off is to switch the fan speed right down to nothing. And if you notice, all the lights go off. So you switch the fan speed to nothing, to the bottom setting, it switches the whole air conditioning system off. Again, totally illogical, totally illogical, but that's how you switch the climate control system off. Switching it back onto auto mode. If you've got it on auto mode and you want to push the fan speed up, as I, as I mentioned to you, you would normally then switch it into manual mode. The fan speed would increase, but it's come out of auto mode then. But if you want the fan speed to increase when you've got it in auto mode, because everything is controlled by the temperature, you put the temperature up. So you think, okay, on the driver's side, I want it to push put up, I want it to push up to 28 degrees. So I want it to get up to 28 degrees as quickly as possible. But hold on a minute, the fan speed hasn't increased. Why is that? Well, because you have to have both of them up to an elevated level. And then the fan speed will increase. But that elevated level. If I then switch one of the sides out, as I've done here, if I then switch the passenger side out to a lower speed, it then turns the fan down. So you have to have both of the, fan, both of the temperature gauges up to their full max to be able to put the fan into full speed when it's in auto mode. Again, totally illogical. So this upper range on the temperature gauge for both would seem to be a max setting where it switches everything into max or predominantly the fan speed into a max fan speed. So that's it guys. Let me know in the comments below if you knew about that, if you already understood that, or if you, or if to you, like most people, it was all rather a whole bag of confusion and you just left it in auto mode and let it do its thing and hoped it, it did what you wanted it to do. So if you found the video informative, give it a thumbs up, give it a like, very important for the channel. If you like our approach to delivering content, please make sure you subscribe, plenty more content to come. Got loads of great cars that we're reviewing later on in the year.
If you're happy for your car to be featured on the channel, drop us an email at the email address below and I'll get back to you with regards to featuring your car on the channel. Thanks a lot for watching guys and we'll catch you in the next video.